Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. It's 6.03. It is 31 degrees. Hopefully you got a long weekend, holiday weekend to help honor presidents. I'm sure you guys did some wonderful things to honor the presidents. What did you do to celebrate? Um, I ate like an a-hole. Um, <laughs> Just like our founding fathers yeah. wanted you to? Well, listen, they sacrificed all the things they did so I could go to like the D'Agostino's Pizza on mm-hmm. a whim and get a slice and a Modelo and walk down the street eating it. That's what I did. Did you go to Dags this weekend? Because I did too. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, we ordered it. Well, I went in the D'Agostino's Pizza with Harper after picking up from daycare one day. We didn't want to cook, so I said, let's take her over there. Then we went for a long walk because it was a beautiful weekend, and they have a little side section where you can get a slice and a beer yeah. for, I think, $7. A be- The slice is a quarter of a pizza. And in this economy, that's a great deal. Oh, any economy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if things get better. That's still <laughs> yeah. a great deal. I mean, right now, everything sucks, but, you know, hey. Hey, it's, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so I get the D'Agostino slice and a beer, a Modelo, with Megan pushing Harper in the stroller, and I'm walking down Addison, drinking a beer in the middle of the day, eating a slice, and I thought, I wonder how stingent Chicago's open container laws are. We're about to find out. Mm-hmm. Also, DCFS may see the situation and not be happy <laughs> yeah, with it either. not be thrilled. I mean, Megan was pushing the stroller. This I was good. Yeah, I was drinking the beer. Uh-huh. This is what our founding fathers and our presidents all before us fought for. Mm-hmm. I could do that. No, no, no trouble. Oh no, I had no trouble. Oh, good. Now we were walking to the corner. We got near Wrigley Field. We were walking over to get some insomnia cookies. Delicious cookies, by the way. If you've never tried them, I'm glad you're continuing your weight loss journey. <laughs> <laughs> Since the victory, I've been on a tear. What a savage! <laughs> But there was a police officer at the corner of Clark and Addison while I was finishing up the Modelo, and I thought of throwing it in a dumpster right by the cubby bear there in the back. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, ah, screw it. So I chugged it all the way to the corner to get every last drop with the officer right there. You know what happened? Nothing happened. No, he tipped his hat to you and said, good day, sir. Good day. (laughs) It's America. Presidents (laughs) fought for this and died, and wars happened. I go, good, good. I'm glad that happened. Good. So I finished the pizza, ate some cookies, drank the Modelo. Yeah, yeah, that was President's Day. Was I'm glad good. you celebrated the court day. It's really nice. <laughs> How did you guys celebrate? How, what, what, did you do anything to honor the presidents, the past? I'd love to know if we have any people that were in historical reenactments yesterday. Oh, I love those. You love those? Yeah. When I, I lived, I got exiled from Chicago Famously. once. And I had to go to Richmond, Virginia for a couple of years. <laughs> Big and, there? Uh, uh, oh, they do the full, like, that's the old capital of the Confederacy if you're not up on your history books. <laughs> Where Confederate flags still fly with get her done on them. And they still do the whole Civil War, Revolutionary War reenactment stuff. And I think those guys walk around in those uniforms all the time. The people that do the reenactments. Well, I think some people are pretty serious about the South rising again. It's more of a lifestyle for them. Now, is that the first cosplay? <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> like doing that stuff. I mean, listen, I'm not hating. I want to get a musket and go run through a field. I'd love it. That sounds great. Ideally, representing the north. Yeah, I'd be for the nor- sake of the show. Well, I live on the north side now. I'd be a north. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a north sider. <laughs> Anybody do any reenactments this weekend? Let us know. Uh, check in with us. Uh, we got a lot for you today, by the way. 8 a.m. again, we'll have Pearl Jam tickets this week. So gearing up for the complete on sale that happens Friday. Um, so Pearl Jam tickets, Wrigley Field. Let's go. That's America right there. Haven't played here in about six years on Wrigley anyway. They did United Center shows last year, which were incredible. Plus, coming up in trivia with a good friend of mine. Going to be stopping by and co-hosting uh, with Kenzie still on maternity leave. I'm not sure what to call him. Because he had a radio name and he's got a real name. And I don't know if he wants... I call him Roker. Everybody knows him on the radio. You know him on the radio as Al Roker Jr. Yes. From Q101 back in the day. Um, I don't know if he wants me to call him his real name because he hasn't used that name in a little bit or not. Like, just because I was Sludge, full disclosure. Back in the day on Q101, I used the name Sludge. And I got rid of it. As I got older, I go, I should just be Brian, my real name. I should be authentic. Mm -hmm. People should know my real name is Brian. I get a feeling Roker is still Roker. 
And Roker will probably still call me Sludge if he comes in here. Probably. Uh, it's going to be weird, but that's the way it is. He's a radio legend, and he's going to fill in this week uh, for Kenzie, and he'll be here uh, before we get to sports. But as we go on with that, he'll be doing – we'll see if he wants to do trivia. I haven't asked him yet. <laughs> but uh, Cold War Kids sound check at the Salt Shed. Uh, you get two passes to the Cold War Kids sound check for the show, and then, of course, you get to go to the show, and you get to meet – Cold War kids. And they're very nice. Oh, they're great. They're a peach. That'll be Friday, <laughs> February 23rd, uh, Color 15. By the way, this weekend was the one-year anniversary of the Salt Shed opening. That's crazy, right? Because Ahoy with Bush was only like a week later it, after it was, that. It's this upcoming weekend that was. it'll be one year. It was like the second show there. And I just, I sat there over the weekend when I saw that news and I thought, man, they really became a Chicago iconic piece of architecture in such a short period of time bands are desperate to play there it yeah. is the venue that everybody wants to be at yeah it's it's i mean just overnight it's you know like places like the metro have been there 40 years and um well the united center and things like that i, I mean obviously tenley park the places where you see concerts it takes a long time to usually get this vibe and instantly day one boom salt shed well it means one year ago this upcoming weekend is when i approached gavin rossdale backstage at the salt shed when my cardigan and dress pants and he looked at me and went this guy looks like he's ready to party and i said gavin you know me yeah the least guy ready to party in the venue was case <laughs> And Gavin thought he was the guy getting ready to party. He's ready to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Oh, it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And before we get to the fact, it makes your brain go, well, what an honor. What a day. What a special time it is right here. <laughs> as bringing in for, as obviously, Kenzie's still on maternity leave. We had Kara Caribou, another Chicago radio legend, and Lauren, of course, our own Lauren O'Neill in a couple weeks and i reached out to my friend and i said are you available to do this i know you've got a lot of different schedule stuff going on you're working like 24 hours a day can you come in in the morning show and just treat our listeners <laughs> with a return to q101 <laughs> and here he is but i don't know what to call him <laughs> now what do you want to go by for the next four days Go by Al Roker Jr. All right, there he is. There you go. Al Roker Jr. is here. Yeah. Let's go. So, because he has a real name, like unlike me, I abandoned Sludge, and now I just go by Brian. Right. Well, I I said, I said, what's the over-under on me calling you Sludge today? Yeah. You want to put money that, on it? That one doesn't count. Oh, that one doesn't count? Yeah, no. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll, hit the, we'll hit the bell when you get that. Okay. Um, I'm so happy you're here. I'm glad to be here, bro. Yeah, I'm glad to it, be it, here. It's amazing. People have been already texting in about uh, Roker and uh, being here. So Al Roker Jr. from the uh, Q101 days past and the loop. <laughs> That's right. And the loop. Where else have you worked? I actually worked in this studio when I was at the loop. Yeah. This was this was our studio. I uh, worked at GN, The Game, V103, GCI. Uh, <laughs> Keep going. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, that's a good thing about Chicago. You can just kind of keep hopping station to station, hopefully stay in town. See, I got exiled. I had to go to Richmond, Virginia for a while. I was just talking about a second with, with young Case, the producer here. Yeah. We can't even get in that story. It's all there's all an NDA on that one, why I got exiled. Is that Ooh. right? Yeah. I'm probably just making that up to make myself sound cool. <laughs> NDA sounds so cool, Brian. I that's got, right. I got fired, and I had to eat, so I left town. That's the whole story. That's it. It would sound much cooler if not. Um, all right, so let's get to a uh, fact that makes your brain go. Coming up here in seven minutes, got Case the Producer and Al Roker Jr. And this one involves making money, talking about having to leave town and go eat in Richmond, Virginia. I also went to Phoenix, also went to Philadelphia. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about Phoenix. Yeah, right? yeah, made it all the way around the horn. All right, so this one involves making money, and this determines, this fact I'll give you at 630 here, of you, you'll make $100,000 more in your lifetime if you have this in your family, and it's not rich parents, it's not like rich, you know, there's some kind of inheritance or an old grandma dies, you can't control it at all. There's nothing you can do, but if you have this thing, if you are blessed with this thing in your family, you will make a hundred thousand more dollars in your lifetime. You have any? Mm. I, I want to guess on this, Roker? Uh, Before no, I get there? No, 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 no. I'll guess when you turn the mics off. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say selling weed? Someone sells weed in your family? <laughs> okay, 6.30, we'll have that for you. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. All right, time for a fact that makes your brain go. 
Now, I said this, something that you can't control, but your family controls it. And it's how you can be able to make $100,000 more in your lifetime if this uncontrollable thing is in your life. And Roker said he wanted to say it off the air. And so you want to say what you said to me off the air when I said that? Well, it's pretty easy as far as I'm concerned. So you, you make $100,000 more in a lifetime. Yep. If you... If you're white. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's not true, Roker. Oh, no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a million dollars more a year. <laughs> come on, Roker. Let's, let's live large. Believe it or not, it's not that, okay? Um, you will make $100,000 more in your lifetime if your parents are hot. That's a fact that they did a study on this. They rated people on what their salaries are, how long they've lived, and what their money ends up being, and then what their parents look like. I don't know who funded this study to go back and look at how hot their parents well, yeah, are. right. <laughs> I mean, uh, were your parents hot? Uh, sure. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. My dad was ha handsome. He was a handsome guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, mom looked good in her wedding pictures. Isn't it funny we look back at your parents' wedding pictures and you realize... Wow, they had sex. Like they, yeah, they I know, right. It's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they looked good enough to each other that they wanted to get it on. Your parents. It's How gross. often do you think about that? Well, le recently, my brother's been scanning old pictures and digitizing them of all of these old scrapbooks. Mm -hmm. So I've been seeing my mom and my dad, and I'm like, damn. You well, know, like, yeah, like, they were knocking boots. Ah, easily. Well, I had four kids, but I mean, I figured something had to happen, like just, just in magic. But I think, you know. So you know they did it four times at least, yeah. right? Four times. <laughs> That'd be amazing if every time they had it, they had a kid. <laughs> It'd be kind of sad, though, to only do it four times, right? Well, it'd be sad, but I mean, me and Megan tried for, I think, almost like nine months before uh, we, I knocked her up. Oh, yeah. there's, there, and that's no fun, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, trying to have baby sex yeah. is no fun. Well, I would walk home from the show, and Megan would go, take off your pants. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. like, oh, it's time. Yeah, it's yep. like taking out the garbage and yep. stuff. <laughs> yep. yeah. Which might be another reference to me having sex. <laughs> There's Brian taking out the garbage again. Uh, how about Case? Your parents, you call them hot? I don't, not currently. Yeah. I mean, they're fine. Yeah, there's they're, a, there's they're a, fine. There's a young photo of my mom where I've definitely been uncomfortable by how it just makes sense to the women that I like look just like my mom did when she was 25. Mm. Oh. <laughs> wow. Pale, blonde hair, brown eyes. It's a reoccurring trend. And yeah. I've seen young photos of my mom, and I'm just very aware of the fact huh. that it's there's on the on the uh, the chart, mm. very similar spot on the chart. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Still got that picture of your mom? I can show it to you, yeah. I'd like to see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, she looks good. Yeah. She, uh, maybe too good. Yeah. I mean. How does she look now? I, you know. Well, she turned 60 yesterday. Happy okay. birthday, Mom. Oh, wow. Oh. You know, honestly, I haven't seen a picture of Case's parents. He we talk about our parents all the time. He's seen my parents, but I haven't seen his parents. I don't, have I seen your parents? Yeah. You, I you guess did. I know what your dad looks like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, what do you think they look like? Well, his dad likes bears. His dad goes on flights to go see bears, like in Montana, just to hunt bears. <laughs> just to go see, like, actual bears. <laughs> yeah, 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 not like... Chicago Bears. No, that's yeah. Chicago Bears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they live in Indiana, so I don't know. I just picture a guy that like like a furry, like wearing a bear suit. You think suit. my dad's a furry? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. And you think my mother's been married to him for 35 years, my father the furry. I assume she's a furry, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, take a good look at your parents. If they're hot, you're going to make 100 grand more the rest of your life, all the way through if you add it up. Did you have a friend that had a really hot mom growing up? Oh, yeah. Were they w more well-off than you were? They were, and yeah. I think about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think about the hot mom, because I play travel baseball, so all summer long I'd be surrounded by good-looking moms that were on the baseball teams or with the sons that I played with. Yeah. They were all way uh, more well-off than my family was, and we did okay. Yeah. White helped. Well, that's because they were paying for your travel baseball. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. But they played with me. They still had way more money, but all the hot moms, yeah, no, they they had bigger houses than we did. How about that, Roker? Case's family had travel baseball money. I know. Tell me about it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even go down to the park down the street. <laughs> playing on concrete, and that's the truth. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.
Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Reminder, at 8 o'clock, we have Pearl Jam tickets for Wrigley Field. Those shows coming out. But before we move forward too far, since it was a three-day weekend and we usually do it on Monday, a uh, little recap your weekend. You have a highlight of your weekend that you want to share. 312-591-8300. Something uh, you know, sp- pretty special that happened. It could be a bad thing, I guess, too. It could be something just memorable from the weekend. Uh, Al Roker Jr. filling in for Kenzie this week on her maternity leave. Um, do you have anything on the weekend that stands out, Roker? Anything? Uh, yeah, I-, I won a couple of bucks on the uh, on the All Star game. I had the over. Wait, you yeah. bet on the All Star game? I had the over. <laughs> So no. I had that money in pocket by like the end of the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what'd you what'd you lay down and how much did you make? I didn't lay down that much for that one. Five or ten, ten bucks. Ten bucks. Yeah. Pizza money. And the over probably was obviously. Uh, oh, the I, over I, was three hundred and fifty-seven. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I thought they yeah. would. What, what was the number? It ended up being two eleven to one. It ended up being three hundred and ninety-six. Ended up being the final. <laughs> Tally, yeah. All right, we'll have more on sports on that. As a dunk contest and everything that happened with the NBA All-Star Weekend. So, hey, made some made a pizza money there on the All-Star game. Yeah, and I had to, it, about 40 minutes of explaining who uh, McClung was to my wife. It's like, why has he got a G on the back of his uniform? And like, well, he's in the G League. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. What's the G League? Oh, oh. <laughs> why don't they have real basketball players in there? I'm like, well, they don't want to do it. It's a valid point, what she makes. Me and Case had that same argument. That if, if LeBron said he was doing a dunk contest, like, everybody would watch. You know, I, right, wa- I watched right. it, too, because Matt McClung is probably the best dunker in the country. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's, he's fun great. to watch. But he's a G League player, so yes. he's not that good. Right. It's, that's the only thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wh- white guy with hops. Yeah. Good in the dunk contest. Oh, he's my hero. Yeah. He's the greatest thing. I feel so inspired when I watch him. I oh, mean, my God. I could do that. He is, oh, he's just the dream to have, like, a 40-inch vertical when you were young. Could you imagine? Brian, could you imagine? I wouldn't be here. I know. Neither would I. I would have been, been on, like, the N one team. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been the professor. Yeah, but I, yeah. And then I would have got a shoe deal somewhere. I would have blew it all like that documentary shows. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. You ever watch that and one documentary? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Port went out for the G League and the and one team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they should make the and they should have made the and one team the G League. That'd be fantastic. And people would watch that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Case, your weekend. What, what happened? Anything good? I, I mean, I saw I saw old high school friends for the first time in a long time. Oh. It's, it's weird when you grow up with people and you're kind of built into like the hometown version of yourself. But then I moved away. I hadn't seen them in five years. They're the same people they were five years ago. I feel like I have changed a lot. And they're mm. like, Indiana's rad. What's up, boys? What, do you yeah. want to get Budweiser? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And, but I, li- I like that there's beauty there in communication that we're still like, I still love these people, but they have not changed at all. It's like they've been frozen in carbonite for five years. <laughs> but you look down on them now, right? I don't look down on them. Because you've evolved and they have I Look, I'm big city case. I'm doing okay for myself. Sure. But, but, you know. <laughs> you, I, le- you left Indiana? Left Indiana? You left the party roads. The you party know, roads. Yeah, drinking like gin and seven up, like on a part on. That's what I grew up. That's how I grew up in Ohio. I was like taking like Sprite two liters and pouring gin in them. Oh, nice. And some guy had like you know some guy had a big boom box. You're playing Skinner and you're drinking out there on a, on a, on a between cornfields. Yeah, what? me me too. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how I grew up. Our lives are so similar, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, you. It's funny when the people that stay home. I mean, and then they stay the same. Yeah, they, they're just locked into that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good because it makes you feel like you know where you came from, and you can say like, "Wow, uh, I came from that, but now I'm this." I always say, "Don't forget your roots." Hey, one of my big sayings. Yeah, I've never heard you say that before <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, so I had a pretty big weekend. I started watching The Bear. I know I'm late. I know I'm late on The Bear. Have you seen it, Roker? I've seen season one. I haven't. Watch season two yet. Okay, good. I'm glad you're like me but a little I'm bit. familiar with it. Because every time I say I haven't seen the bear, this one over here, Case, or anybody else in the building, what are you, an idiot? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. And you know, I had a kid last year. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, very, very unique yeah. experience you no, had. No time for the bear. That's right. Yes, exactly. You know what I feel like when I have to explain why I haven't seen all the new shows out there? I feel like TLC and Behind the Music trying to explain how they blew $30 million. <laughs> <laughs> it came back to me. I was like, oh, well, see, here's how it happens. Thirty million. You ever seen that Behind the Music with TLC? Yeah. With, they, like, that one year they made $30 million and they went bankrupt. What a fool. 
And they had to go, well, here's how you lose $30 million in one year. First off, half goes to the government. And then your agent comes in and takes another 30%. And then the house burns down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another, another good reference. As uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez burned down Andre Risen's house, who was a big <laughs> Cleveland Brown football player at the time, she said she tried to light his shoes on fire to send a message. She burned the house down. Uh, he got the message. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I feel like when I'm trying to explain why I haven't seen the bear. I've got to go through this big, whole long monologue before I can just say, I, I can't just say I haven't seen it yet. I can't just say that and people go, oh, well, you should watch it. It's a good show. No, it's instead I'm an a-hole and a loser <laughs> because the show came out a year and a half ago and you haven't caught up on it. But it's two seasons deep now. That's the problem. If you were just like, oh, man, I, I haven't seen the second season or if it was just the first season, it'd be like, all right, you had a kid. I get it. You're two seasons deep now, Brian. Come on, get oh, with it. Oh, you're not going to rip on Roker for not seeing season two yet? He's a guest. I would never say such oh, a thing. Thank you very much. Of course. He's a that. delightful man. An honored guest. <laughs> yeah. So let's see how he feels on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have seen season one, and it is incredible. Did you I finish the whole season? I finished season one because I, I didn't realize they were like Entourage. They're like half-hour episodes. Yeah, they're yeah. just like Entourage, Brian. It, it like, <laughs> but I will say this, and I want to ask everybody, did you have this experience watching The Bear for the first time? Did you have to keep the subtitles on? Like the first episode or so, because the way they talk so fast and scream the entire time, like you, I could not figure out what was going on. And so I just kind of ended up watching the subtitles. We're a subtitles household anyway, so it stays on. You leave mine all the time? Yeah, my girlfriend does. She can't hear. That's weird. That's a thing. Yeah, well, she has the TV. This is a huge argument in our relationship, because I'll, I'll come in, and she'll have the TV on, like, eight on the volume. Yeah. I, can't, yeah. I can't hear anything. I just I just see mouths moving. I can't hear anything. <laughs> and I go, can we at least hit double digits on this thing? And then we put the subtitles on. So I, I'm used to the subtitles, but what about you, Roker? I think I have mine at about 42. <laughs> yeah. if I'm, seriously. The volume? 42, the volume, yeah. 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 And then I still, and that's before the edibles kick in. <laughs> I still have the subtitles on half the time. Yeah, the thing is, though, you have, you have a house now in Joliet? What do you live yes, in? Yes, yes. So, like, that's the thing. When you have a house, you live in apartments like me and Case do, you worry about... I, I You worry about the that shared wall there. Yeah. Like, I'm like, are they going to, like, go, hey! Because <laughs> I've had that... I used to do that to people now. As I got older, I could like, turn it down. Yeah, you know, you were a party killer for a while. You were Buzz Killington with the girls downstairs. Oh, God, these girls were downstairs from us. To, you know, young... Uh, smoking weed every day. Uh, what were you gonna What were you gonna say after young? Because you paused. <laughs> I am not gonna say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they had good looking parents. <laughs> That's right. They had good looking well parents. Off. But I had to go down there and do the cop knock with them at three in the morning. Oh. Like, be like, open up. Oh. Turn it down. Trying you know to get some sleep. Yeah. Well, they were so high they didn't wake up, so I never even got to face off with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they weren't smoking weed. I don't think yeah. that's really concerning. Smoking all this weed. I got a baby upstairs. It's, it's lofting up. It'd be good coming through the vents. Yeah. Yeah. And then they say, "Oh, it's good. Your baby slept good." I mean, no, it's not. <laughs> Babies don't need weed in their face. You idiots. <laughs> all right. That was my weekend. And seeing the bear was. Uh, was really good. I'm glad I caught up. I have to do season two this week, too. I think season two is better. Everybody said that. When I put it up on Facebook, everybody said, just bear with it, hang with it. And I said, I'm, I'm hanging with it. It's good from the get-go. But I never worked in a restaurant. But that people say if you worked in a restaurant, you get, like, PTSD from that yeah, show. Yeah, my, my wife is a chef, so she's, like, picking up on all the little things. Yeah. I didn't know it was a Chicago thing to call your cousin cousin. That's one thing in Chicago I didn't. I mean, like, I've lived here forever. I've never heard a cousin go, yo, cousin. Is, is that a show thing? Or is that a real thing? Do you call your cousin cousin? It could be a neighborhood thing. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they tried to make a couple references like, hey, man, get on the Edens. And I was kind of oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's cute. Oh, I hate that. It's yeah. cute. <laughs> I hate that. It's all right. I get it. They're trying, but uh, good show. I like it. So, uh, coming up, we have obviously we'll get to sports with Roker. Should be great. And uh, Pearl Jam tickets at 8 o'clock for Wrigley Field. First, it's Gil Curtis. This is not headline news. Kevin Costner's divorce is finalized. She gets his money from baseball hat movies, he gets his money from cowboy hat movies. Russia is developing a secret missile that can shoot down satellites. For more details, watch every James Bond movie. A new study says movie theater seats can have 14 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. And thanks to the latest handful of superhero movies, there's just as much crap coming off the screen. And a class at the University of Iowa is using Pokemon Go to teach math. Just in case you're wondering why you don't have your flying car yet. This is not headline news. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101.